I'm not Bill Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Five years of TMG. I've only been here 24. So that's, uh, that uh, yeah. So that there, as far as that goes, we have there, and then okay, for sale. Oh, thank you. These are the programs that they've got natively tenant. April, May, and June is up for grabs. Home networking was supposed to be this year, but they'll probably do that. Will that go out in the emails, what they'll have? Or no. We'll, we'll probably do that next month. Okay. I, I got the presentation at 1130 last night, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I got you should be ready. Yeah, I don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that. Yeah, we hear about the virus is going from animals to people. Maybe we could go from food. Uh, I think he's got a new world virus. No, he didn't sound good. He uh, he couldn't talk while we was going to hang up the phone to go. <laughs> oh. No, I, didn't say I, I rang the doorbell and everything was sitting right in the front of his door. I just went in and got it. You has that seat. Yeah. <laughs> Have the open form. Any uh, guests today? Oh, sorry, I have to open it. Any guests on? We're not being Bill's exactly. We're going to have a loose room. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, if anybody wants a license to Camera Plus, I don't know if there's any licenses left over there. Camera Plus is an app that runs on your uh, iPhone or iPads, and it takes the place of your phone app. Uh, and it, it has a lot of nice features, so there's free licenses or if you want one. You mean you can use it as a phone? Use your iPad as a phone? No. no. <coughs> camera Plus. Oh, Camera. We have two guests today. I'll just notify that Kevin Cook. Yeah. you stand up and, and tell us what you want to do? Um, uh, Kevin Cook. Uh, I'm a guest of Brad, actually. Uh, I work with them at O'Neill and Associates. We do uh, technical illustrating. Went to Columbus College of Art Design from 90 to 95, so kind of started early in Max. Just after graduating, everything I knew and learned, all the software I had was still Max, so I just kind of kept that route. Um, got a job at uh, O'Neill after a while, and uh, Brad told me about the group, and I thought I'd come down and check sure. it You're welcome here. Thank you. Ask questions. Um, I'm a guest, and I'm wrong myself. Do you know what, what kind of Mac is it? Is it an iMac, a MacBook Pro? It's an iMac okay. 10. It's, an it's iMac. the Leopard. 
okay. uh, operating system. I see there's what about five more that should be on there. <laughs> <laughs> At it's least okay. five. Yeah, you can operate. I, I, I run all the operating systems, so you know, just Leopard's fine. As long as your browser works enough for you, usually that's good enough. That's your speed and uh, the applications that you're using at the time, too. Okay, then we'll go on to the, what Dan had for sale. Dan's got the Intel Mac Pro on sale. So that's, uh, that's way old. What's he still got that on there, then? Well, he needs to delete it. <laughs> I do have some stuff for sale, but not Any, that. Okay, um, uh, anybody got Apple news to report? Product announcements last week for the iWatch. Yeah. New MacBook Air. I'm afraid I'm coming for the watch. <laughs> iOS 8.2, I just loaded on my Mac and my, or my iPhone and my iPad, and over on that table where you see the scanner, that'll cost you the labor it takes to carry them to your car. <laughs> I'm giving all that stuff away. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the latest and greatest, but that scanner was especially nice when I used it. Word of warning, I think it may be only good for people running Windows on their Mac, but uh, we'll see. And then out in the car, I have a too big for me to carry in a uh, UPS power, un uninterruptible power supply. Right. And it's a, it's a heavy duty dude, needs a new battery. Uh, I have everything I need in that respect, so I want to give it away too. Free's good. Free is good, yeah. Just don't put your place up. the free. scanner. Um, Bill had talked about using a program ViewScan. Uh, I didn't get it, have a chance to try that, but I was successful with an old uh, uh, Canon, Canon that was powered from the USB port, and I got it working real well with my uh I don't know what ViewScan will do right now, but I've had that program for about 10 years or so, Yeah. and every scanner I've ever tried to plug into it has worked just fine. From film scanners that wouldn't work on everything else, going from USB to uh, the old versions, you know, everything seemed to work. So I didn't bother to even test it because if I give that one away, then I'll be down to five scanners. <laughs> <laughs> Is your name Bill? <laughs> well, just word to right? Well, every time, every time I bought a printer, I got a scanner. <laughs> Just anyone that wants to think about that scanner, ViewScan probably is a program that would allow you to use it yeah. on your computer. And all the paperwork, uh, disk for the operating system, everything's in that uh, envelope there. The USB? Uh, I don't, yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> I swear I've got no stuff. Well, the film scanner I was talking about was SCSI with an adapter to USB, and it still, ViewScan still brought it up. It was a nice, yeah, when I used it. Shauna was mentioning the new yeah. MacBook Air. Uh, notably on that thing, it, it has one port now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a USB, was it USB dash C? Yes. C. And that port does everything. You power it from that port, uh, you do your video, uh, the USB. So evidently there's a uh, at least a $79 adapter that you plug into that port and it has three outputs on it. I think there's the power, there's HDMI, and there's USB. So it's just know that if you buy this new MacBook Air that's only got the, the one port, you're going to have to buy some additional adapters. They're not calling that an Air. They're calling that a MacBook. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. They refresh the MacBook yeah. Airs with a new right. process. They, right. So you're going to have to have also a hook. Right. You'll have to get the adapter and plug a hub into that. Janet? Yeah, with regard to that, I get Kim Commando's e-newsletter 
I don't know what you experts think of it, but they're really helpful to me. And you can pick them up, but they re talked about this new hub along with a whole lot of other things. And it seems to be really going to be quite powerful and going to be improving and getting better uh, once some other things come along. But I just recommend, especially like for <coughs> yes, just getting new <coughs> Mac, if all this gibberish you think, USB C, 3C, or whatever, oh well. Um, go out and just Google Kim Commando I get it. with a K. With a I K. Yeah. You are, it, it, she has from Mac, a Mac World. Mac World. I get the Mac World digital thing, and they just have really nice stuff that's easy to understand for me, which I need. So I just recommend that because I was reading about that. And of course, it sounds good. Good. Reading is good. Yeah. Any other news? Okay. Sure. Microsoft Office released Office 2016 beta preview for Mac. You can install it while keeping Office 2011 on your Mac, which I recommend, <coughs> because there are certain features not yet ready in the beta. Like if you go to the options menu, there's no options there yet. <laughs> Implementations in the preview. No options. That's like maker work. So it's supposed to be closer to Office 2013. I tried to do that, and it wanted some kind of either my identity from work, which I don't have because I'm Did retired, or some other identity that I didn't have, so I just gave up. Did you have to sign in with something? No, um, the machine I installed it on. Okay. Did they skip all the way from 11 to 16? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because Windows came out with 2013. I see. So. Yeah. Any items for sale or wanted? Everybody's happy there. That's hard to understand. <laughs> Anything on the help desk? Any problems? It's going to be real short. I can always tell questions about finding dead people. Has <laughs> 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 uh, anybody had any luck using AirDrop between uh, Mac OS and iOS? Did everybody hear that? What? You can repeat it. Has anybody, has anybody had success using AirDrop transferring a file from iOS devices to a Mac? Yes, I have. It does work, but uh, the MacBook Pro that my wife has, I've been able to transfer, but it's a later MacBook Pro. My iMac is a mid-2011, and it does not work. Um, Although AirDrop shows up and looks like it's going to work, it doesn't because it has uh, the wrong, uh, let's see, it's supposed to have a Broadcom chip in it for the Bluetooth or something. I don't know exactly what, I don't remember what the details were, but it just doesn't, doesn't work. I'll get a phone call on my cell phone. I'll be sitting at my iMac, and the iMac starts ringing. You know, you can do that. But if I try to answer it on the Mac, it doesn't work. So, yeah, there are some things that uh, you know, aren't working with that. But, like I said, with my, the MacBook Pro, the later one, yeah, it does work. I had to resort to Dropbox, so, yeah. John, uh, is anybody having any experiences with Skype? I've tried to use Skype from my MacBook Pro and call my wife who has an iPhone and I keep getting a response and please enter a passcode which would be if I call the home phone number that doesn't occur and I, I think I saw something on the internet that says uh, some internet providers are starting to put in security blocks that doesn't sound Reasonable, they the internet yeah, service it, provider it, wouldn't be thinking around with Skype protocol. Yeah, because uh, Skype's now been taken over by Google and Google and Microsoft. Apple, or, like, Skype is or, or Skype. Microsoft, or I guess it is. Yeah, I've I've used it in you know on iPod Touches, but I haven't gotten around to fooling on with it on a current iOS device. Right. Works quite well. Okay. Can you, using that computer, demonstrate how, if I looked up a website and I, I want to save it, it used to be you just grabbed it and 
dragged it down into your, your list. You just want the URL? Yeah, but now it always wants to go into a, a reader file or something. So how do I save that to... you want the whole page or do you just want the little page? I just want, I just want the website. The bookmark. The bookmark. The bookmark. How do you how do I move it into the bookmarks? <laughs> you just ask you're, you're using which browser are you using? Safari. Safari. Please put it in your bookmark it from your menu. That's a problem. I can't figure out how to do that. In the past I would just click on it and drag it in. Now it always wants to drop into the reader file. Yeah. Is that off your laptop? Or where? IMAC. There should, should be a drop down menu that comes out yeah. of the menu bar that'll have a bookmark. Yeah, I, well, I haven't been able to find it, but I think you're right. I just want to see it. <laughs> right. Well, back, they, this reading file was part of one of the new operating systems. I remember they brought it up. That one. I'm using 10 point whatever the latest. There's a command key. Point, you use the command key and the letter D. Okay. And that's the same as going up to bookmarks and saying, yeah, no. show bookmarks. So you add bookmark right here. Is, you can just add far. the bookmark right here, say. Add bookmark, and you can also use the command D. Yeah, yeah. that's command D. If the reading list is the oh, one that's selected in that side yeah. tab, though, then it will default to the reading list. Right. See where it says favorites? There. If you see where it says favorites at the yeah. top? Yeah. Click okay. on that on the right and see if it doesn't come up with other choices. Yeah, you can place it anywhere. Click on where it says favorite. You can retitle that any time. <coughs> what you want to have it say, so you understand what it is. Can you click on favorites? Yeah, it used to be um, as simple as just putting your cursor up there in that line where it's right. right. No, no, over, the, over right. to your right. In your pop-up. <coughs> the dialogue. The pop-up dialog box. Yeah. The one that's already up. Right dead center. Right here. Page two. Right. Now he Keep wants going. to see the blue, the, the blue stuff. The drop-down right. menu. He wants to there see favorites. There you go. Go up. No. He wants to see pages in there. <laughs> Add bookmarks. Yeah, I click up at the top and it says favorites. favorites. Up at the top. Favorites. The selector on. Untitled. There, so you can put it untitled. Right. You can add a new one. Add yeah. You can add a new one. You can just call it save it to bookmarks. You can, you can create a new folder called the folder what you want and drop it in there. I've done all that. But I, like I'm trying to explain, in the past, I could just put the cursor up there at apple.com. In fact, I think it was really at the left edge of that, that Pick it dialog up, box. Just click on it and drag it where I wanted it to go. But now, I... I you mean like drag it to your desktop and you have the URL? I drag it to yeah, my... You could have a folder with your URLs in it like that. Or you could just yeah. copy it and open the folder and paste it. Yeah. Or you can well, drop it in the... Uh, actually, what you're telling, explaining to me is what I was trying to do. Because yeah. in the past, I've got a list of different subjects, like automotive and... and right, well, that's what you want to create so a folder. That I put you have a subfolder on automotive, and you've dropped your URLs in there. Right. And then when you go to click My on question it. is, I think you've just shown me how to do that, and it's more complicated than it used to be. Well, they're, they're always just like Microsoft. Here's they're going to get more complicated because they take it easier. The fourth would be see, I'm dragging. Right. Okay. Yeah, you can drop it in there. The rest of your. But like I said, you could also have a. Uh, you could also have a word file. Oh, okay. And it becomes another one of your. Oh, okay. And your shortcut. They drop the URL. Then you want to have a description for the URL. That's where if you have a so subfolder you got more in your favorites, so just describe yeah. it like I'll have it for different yeah. genealogy sites. Some of them are for research, yeah. some are for find a grave, yeah. or gravestones, or what have you. They're all yeah. subfolders. Yeah, I have the folders and the subfolders just like you did. Yeah. And then, of course, if you want, if you have URLs, you can always, of course, take all the URLs, paste them in Excel, and have the definition of what each website is. And that way you can sort it. Just okay. Yeah. And if your link is still active on your hyperlink, you'll launch from there, or if you paste it in Word, your, your hyperlink is still there, because when you copy, your hyperlink goes with it. Okay. Any other questions on that? Yeah. 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 Do we know for a fact that that dragging method doesn't work anymore? I drag. Mm -hmm. Great. I don't drag it. It doesn't. Uh, it could be as some kind of a configuration. My other 
Websites will shift because of uh, security breaches, and they try to go to a safer uh, system, and then they'll, you'll find that you'll have your link there. Now, they may have an update link, and others won't have anything at all. It just depends on how popular the page is. On the browsers, the older versions, you used to have all your bookmarks strung across horizontally right below the URL line, and now they've got toolbar. a toolbar. In the toolbar. Yeah, in your toolbar. Right below the URL. Right. And now you've got a little symbol up near the upper left. You click on it, and it, direct, it pops some, all those bookmarks up on the left side of your screen. Yeah, but it, yeah, it depends you how you still have customized the menu. Yeah, you can well, always customize. You can only have so much up there, right? It's I always truncate the name. That's where I have mine. I don't use the truncate the name. I truncate if I have if I want date daily news. If I have that when I have DD. Yeah. Uh, FG for fine degree because I know what they are. Yeah, so that way I can get more on there. On I just wish they had a way to shut the graphics off. Yeah, but you know, this is not as many as it used to be. Our question for Mark. Uh, 15. That thing we talked about earlier now, about not having ID to be able to do Yosemite. Yeah. Uh, okay, you said I can put like six on bars of Yosemite and it would work. Can you still then, is that you share it? That's or a new you, way of getting to it. When you're getting ready to put it in. No. Out of iMovie, say when you go to share it, drop, there'll be a drop down and there'll be a place for five. Save it to a file. Save it to either your desktop or another place on your hard drive. Okay. And then, then fire up IDVD and then you can drag and drop it into IDVD. Okay. That's Google, not Just want to make sure. And what he's asking is if you buy a new iMac now, or any type of Mac, you don't get iDVD anymore. Um, so people ask, well, how do I make my DVDs? The last version of iDVD, that was, I forget where, what it came on, um, well, I'm using I six, one I of the latest iLives. But it, that version still works in Yosemite. So you can go ahead and install it on a new uh, machine and it'll still work. Would six work, do you think? I don't know. Okay, we'll have to try it. I wanted to see what we selected and see where it's set. Any other questions? I had a recent experience with upgrading the, uh, the 8.2, iOS 8.2. Um, my setup is such that in order to avoid going behind my iMac all the time with the USB ports, I have an extension cable, USB extension cable that I plug in, six foot long. When I hook my phone up to that cable through its USB connection, I did the upgrade just fine, and it was successful. When I hooked up my iPad <laughs> to that same cable, it started behaving in weird ways. I was getting the chiming sounds in the iPad intermittently, and uh, I got an error message in iTunes, which I couldn't clear. I had to do a force quit. And I was wondering if anybody, the only way I got around it and actually did the, uh, the 8.2 upgrade in my iPad was to, un is to take the extension cable out of the loop and plug the USB cable from my iPad directly into the back of the iPad. Then it worked. I didn't get this weird behavior. But Apple Care technician couldn't give me any explanation for why that was happening. 
and I've yeah, ended up sending the cable back to where I bought it, which was MaxSales.com, to get them to replace it or find out if there's anything wrong with it. But I was wondering if anybody knew if there was a difference between the iPad and the iPhone that would account for something like that happening on one and not the other, okay. using yep. the same cable, using the same process. The iPad takes more power. Yeah, for, for so, charging purposes, yeah. but not for data transmission purposes. Um, so that's what confused me. And when I was getting this intermittent chiming, the little power symbol up in the upper right was flashing at the same time. So I don't know if it was something in Yosemite that was confused or something on the iPad that was confused. Has OWC come back and told you anything? Yeah. No, they, they won't tell me anything until they get the cable oh, okay. and do their tests on it. But I have a feeling they're going to tell me the cable's fine. I mean, well, it works fine with uh, flash drives. It works fine with the iPhone. Be the persistent iPad. with them. Go back and ask them, so why doesn't it work for the iPad? Well, You're I, I did, and they yeah. don't have any explanation for it well, either. OWC is pretty good. They should be able to figure that out. Yeah. You upgraded your I iPad was, with a new version OWC. through the iMac. Oh, yeah, always. I always do that. I always plug it in, do it through iTunes. A good thing to remember when you're buying cables for iPhones or iPads, uh, Apple certifies they have something called MFI, made for iPhone or i whatever. So when you buy a cable, see if it's certified MFI. Because if it's certified MFI, then it should work. If it's not, because I've bought a lot of uh, lightning cables that were, you know, three foot long that were like 99 cents, and I get them and they work for about two nanoseconds, and they <laughs> break, you know, and they're not, they're not certified, so I just quit buying all that junk and just started buying cables that are certified. And there's, a, actually, uh, if you buy, uh, Amazon has some cables that are MFI. So if you're looking for, you know, decent cables, go to Amazon and buy, uh, Amazon Basic, I think is what they, what they call it. Any other questions? Or, oh, what is it? For sale? Uh, I'm sorry? Has everybody got the raffle tickets? It costs more, doesn't it? Oh, okay. Everybody has the raffle tickets. Are we doing a raffle? Oh. Block had a church on it. Right? Every single block had a church. People lived there. Wherever there you turned, there was a church. People lived there. And across the street here, now you have a bus. Uh, that bus station were nice in there. That's fine. On the corner in the old no, days, I when I was younger, you used to have modular candies in the corner store. And over here you have, you have, that used to be the Callahan building, which later became Jim City Savings. Now the Cal that corner here is the original old Pine cemetery, Pioneer Cemetery in early Dayton. Because they built Dayton on the river's edge of the monument. That used to be Water Street. That's what they called it. And they figured from there to here was far enough to have a cemetery. And so when they dug out base for the Callahan building, they found a lot of the old bones. <laughs> and they reinterred them in the old Presbyterian Cemetery. There was two cemeteries down the three, and other two cemeteries downtown where the old train station is, gone now, Union Station. On 6th Street used to be the Presbyterian Cemetery. And they dug those graves up and took them out to uh, Woodland. Woodland also, they also took some of the Catholic cemetery now. Across from the fairgrounds, down to, at, at there, used to be the street that went straight out to the fairgrounds main entrance had Fairgrounds Avenue, which went to St. Henry Cemetery, which was the Catholic cemetery. All those are gone. So when you ever go to Calvary, they've got a mausoleum there that's right there. 4,000 bones remain of the unclaimed bodies of the Catholics there. But that is the downtown area. 
can I, can I interject something? Sure. This means so much to me because my father, for 30 years, worked and ran Rogers Jewelers yeah. downtown. Oh. 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 The sign of the revolving diamond. Yeah. 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 Next to McCrory's. Yeah. 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 Remember that? Irving Neiman was his name. I brought my brother a watch from there. <laughs> I was very close to related my dad. to Neiman Marcus. And I went in the shop all the time with the bus. You know, I go back to eight years old and you went wait. to see my dad at Rogers. And this was, of course, where it was. It was on Main Street. Yeah. yeah. So for me to see what the street looked like that my dad worked on way before I was ever born and before he was born is a, a real coup for me. So this was worth it. It's just like the, one of the original. There's been many buildings that Rikes was there. They had one on the corner of Fort and Main Street. They had a big smokestack on top and everything. Down here, of course, is where they later ended up. But all that, you know, of course, is all gone. And when they disassembled the old courthouse, which had the DPML building in it, it was granite and marble, a lot of that contractors sold out, the rich people bought for marble and the fireplaces and everything. Because there was a lot of quarries around the area back in the old days. Everywhere you went You're around. You're talking about the like courthouse that was next door to that. One. Yeah. The yeah. new okay. court. That's where they had the date, uh, they had the, the old journal oh, stuff too. The see the advertisement for the journal. Right? The same building. I used to play on the courthouse when I was a kid. Are you in that picture? On there. Are you in that picture? I could have put myself in there. <laughs> this was a, this one here came off of Dayton history books. So I reworked it because it was yellow and faded, and that's what I came up with. And the Phillips house. Many a president and his wife stayed here in the Phillips House. A lot of your important people stayed there and had banquets and what have you. Presidential and everything. They always did. I've got programs from there. Even Miller? I've got a question before you go. What I've always wondered, you know, in the time of horse-drawn um, vehicles, did they have poop scoopers that were <laughs> went around? I mean, how, who picked up all the poop? Well, you know, I, that could be sold. Yeah, I, I, there I was so a, There was a thing on PBS that they talked about, uh, well, that's either Chicago or New York City, and the cities, when, because they made the, the comment that the horse dung just, and urine just went everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And so they would hire little kids, like young boys, eight, nine, ten years old, and their job would be to basically peruse the streets, and as soon as the horse did its thing, it was supposed to be out there and scooping this stuff up and taking it to some, some more, central, more central location. And where it was plenty. picked up because yeah. the farmers that weren't that far out of the city necessarily, they were willing to pay yeah. pennies yeah. on the pound or whatever, and they would get this, deliver it to them, and put it out in their field as fertilizer. I just want to point out something here. Back here we see the shiny slick. You can see that. There's oh, a yeah. shiny area. And there's a horse and carriage there. This is a trolley car. The blurred images in here are all carriages because this time lapse photography, the ones that didn't, didn't hold, then they would have that, see? Because all you did in the old days, you pull lens cap off 100, 100, and 200. I used to do that. <laughs> oh, so no, I had there. a camera at, at, at Blue Printing when I started out. They, get, they didn't have anybody take, shoot the, uh, the line work for photography for the company. So he got hold of uh, let it close out, and it was an old Bellows camera. That's down in the Cincinnati Terminal in their museum. And I would simply hunt, plate the back, I'd put the film in there, and I'd pull the lens off. And I had four arc lamps, and I'd start counting. And I'd adjust my exposure for time, with time. And we'd take a picture of that, of all the line work shots that way. What I was going to tell you down here is the old Main Street Bridge, where you go over now, you know, and you used to have the <coughs> Soldier's Monument there now. Right. That used to be the old wood covered bridge there, and it's back there, but it was cropped off in the photo. <coughs> but these, all these blurred things, except of course right here, which is the trolley car, are all, you either have people walking or horses and buggy. And many a picture like people disregard the shadows, but that's what they are. They're blurred, blurred images of movement on that. But there's people in the foreground there that's pretty sharp, and they yeah. had to be. Well, that's because of the lens opening away. Well, like like box camera, you just have a pinhole piece of. Never standing still. Just standing still. still. You'd have things like that. So if you if you have a, uh, even in, in your 35 millimeters, if you shot on a bulb setting, the lens is open. 
I would took, take night shots of Dayton at, off the Miami Valley Hospital garage, and I'd have the bulb, and that would hold the lens open, and I would count. And I would do multiple exposures. Because the longer the opening, the more light travels from a distance. That's why you get the streaks of light. <coughs> and you have lens openings right. like that. You'll see uh, people will actually do art, art that way. Right. And you have color lights that swirl and twist. If you take a picture in the car at night with headlights, you'll see it's going like this. It's light travel. But I thought people would enjoy that. It's 1872. Is it's, that uh, really a tea store? Or is that because there's another? That's room? an oyster, oyster, and it's grocery. Oh. What they, they, right here it says oysters, and it was the, it was the Oregon Oyster and Tea Company. Okay. I couldn't find any information on it. Though. That's the first building on the picture. The left. That's the, the left. This one down here is also groceries. That's the corner building. And like I said, if, if you ever around here, they had Mary Jewelers and all that. That's where that was located, the corner of 3rd and Main. And across the street over here is where you had the Callahan building, which later was built up higher and became Jim City. Now, that's famous for a photographer. Up at the top floors, underneath the clock of the old Jim City building, Jane Reese, famous photographer, lived there. She had a studio. And it was open to air up at the very top underneath the clock. <coughs> and the elevators would be shut off at night, and she was partially blind. And she took all the, and she had buffalo robes. And she would lay and sleep up there and cover up the buffalo robes. But she knew Stiglitz, all the old photographers were famous, but she stayed here and took pictures. So there's a lot of things about Dayton that people don't realize. And the client was in the, one of the first, well, she probably just up her nurses training, a good Samaritan. And when they built Good Samaritan Hospital, there was a lot of this discussion about the fact that nobody would go that far out to get to a hospital. Oh, well, that's always the thing. thought it was horrible that they built a hospital out in the booth. Well, behind the, the <laughs> downtown library, the old Museum of Natural History was located. There's just a house back there, and they had all these artifacts. And now you've got the, your, your Boonshoft, and that was the predecessor of the Boonshoft. In the, old, that's part of in the old Kirk Tower on Callahan. Yeah. I went up there when it was still up there. They had four faces of clock. Yeah. And they all went chess, all went to the center. That one gear. This drove way they always work, yeah. So that they were all mm -hmm. in unison. But I just thought you'd enjoy a picture of Dayton back at that time. Actually here at the courthouse in eighteen sixty one, my great 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 uncle and, and grandfather during the Civil War and they had the Dayton band and they all marched off to the Civil War. That was the focal, focal, focal point for all of downtown. Because even down here, you see the horse carriages that's lined up with the horses. Um, I do have a question. Did you say that that was called the Oregon Grocery? Yeah, it was the Oregon Tea and Oyster Company. OK, now we have the Oregon District. Huh? Yeah, District. but I don't know if that's really done with that. Oh, I just wanted to ask, yeah. what is the connection of Oregon to Dayton? Well, I, I, that, Oregon was a, a, a major, that had a major fur companies in the old days. Because this was Ohio at the time when it started, of course, with Northwest Territory. Hamilton County, which is Cincinnati, actually went all the way up to the top of Ohio at one time. And slowly got broken up to the different counties. And the upper right hand of, of Ohio was actually claimed by another state, and it's theirs. That's why there's a conflict on tax records and stuff in the 1700s. Just a, a comment about the courthouse. Uh, uh, maybe some of you folks know that uh, Abraham Lincoln, before he became president, uh, he spoke in front of the courthouse. There's uh, a group in Dayton, the Lincoln Society, that is trying to raise money to put a statue in front of the courthouse. Last, last Sunday, uh, former Governor Taft uh, presented Lincoln's uh, second, second inaugural speech at the courthouse. It was an event downtown. It's, it's like a lot of uh, places where, where people are from. If you don't research and look at it, there's a lot of things that have happened in the past, no matter what. Uh, I know it's off the subject, but it's like in the Who Are You Are Now and everything else, the Ancestry TV shows, they mostly do famous people. And they've rejected people who didn't have famous lines. 
But a lot of people, I, you know, they can afford to have that done, but people, the common person is so expensive to do research. Great, great, great. No, no, it's, it's for advertisement. It's all for that. But, uh, you'd be surprised what goes on here in a town like that. But they had these, and the waters came from the 1913 flood, came straight down. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, ran like a river. Yeah. Good. So now that river's not paved. That's, is that no, a that's river? dirt. That's dirt. Yeah. And you've got the rails for the trolley. Right. Yeah. I've got other pictures sometimes if anybody wants to see. But yeah, it's... Someone talked about you didn't really need paved roads. And I was talking to somebody in the back. I forgot. Uh, until automobiles came along and... Uh, they wanted a smooth ride, yeah, I guess whereas so. horse and buggies, they just ride on anything. Yeah. Well, it's like the old cabins and everything. You had your floors, you didn't have any wood floors. So when it got, when it rained, you know what it smelled like in your house then. Plus the worms and everything else would come up. So, yeah, that's just the way they did. But people existed. When they came up in Dayton, they came up on, on the river up here, on Water Street, and they had the first probes, and then they built Newcomb Tavern and everything. And they figured downtown there to here was far enough for a cemetery. Over on where the canal was on Patterson Street, that was a canal that went all the way from one end of the pile to the other. And they had probes on there, really. Some of them came up on the canals, and, and that was all filled. At that time, when state started in 1790, after that, they used to have uh, deer and, and bear and everything around downtown. Because you had, it was all wild. Uh, in answer to the question about Oregon District, there's a story. It may be it may be true. It may not be true. Uh, that uh, back in the in the earlier part of the 19th century, that part of Dayton uh, uh, was considered so far out that it might as well be in Oregon, uh, and, the, and the name the name stuck. The, the, I read that years ago in a uh, uh, in a piece. I don't even remember where I got it, but. That it may it may be one of those apocryphal stories, but I don't know. There's but, always a lot of truth in it. It's just like Ohio was a jumping off point to go out west. Then Indiana was a jumping point to go out west. Right. We kept going through. Can I get back to a technical question? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> if we're through in the history, uh, uh, this is a TMG. But anyway, uh, I have a problem that's been happening that I don't know if someone knows the answer to it or what. It, it's where I start typing my name, uh, pardon me, my email address in my iOS devices. I'll start typing it, you know, eshopper.earthlink.com. And when I get to the at, I look back and it's jump. It's changed what I had typed before the eshopper. It's changed it to e something echo something. And then I have to keep uh, deleting back and starting it again. And maybe sometimes on the second time. Sometimes the third time it'll leave it the way I typed it. And I don't know where it got that ability to change what I just typed when I'm typing in my email address. So what did you do to offend the NSA? <laughs> <laughs> what, does anybody know? Well, I've got him meeting over to these three gentlemen. Have <laughs> yeah. you got auto you on your iPhone, your iPad, or what? Uh, my iPad. Have you got autocorrect on there? This is in a, a email field. Yes, yeah, in an email field where it's it says in, it's in type your, in your this email is the URL. Address. This is the oh, URL yeah. with them. What uh, happens? I've had something like that, and what happens is you've got two or three different addresses, and it's defaulting to the wrong one, and you have to go find where the check is. It's trying to auto match. I, default to the one. I don't one recognize two. that what it changes it to. It just, oh. It's not necessarily a URL field. Sometimes when I'm typing in, yeah. uh, you know, you got to put your, your email address and then a password for something. It's like an autocomplete. Just like an right. autocomplete. Yeah. So this I is, start so and it changes it. This, when is, I get this is when you're, you're typing in a field, uh, in a, in a, field in a web that asks form? For your, asks for your email in a address. In web form. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, like you're changing your password somewhere or you're going to some company and they want your email address in there. You start typing. You get to the at, and it's no longer ES Hopper, it's something else. It starts with E, but. Then this is Safari? No, it's not. No, no, in any place. That iOS. You need to type. I, you're talking, you're talking iOS. iOS. Here, here's a possible answer to this. If you go into settings, general, there's a setting for keyboard. If you click on keyboard, one of the options you have, or some of the options you have, is auto capitalization, auto correction, check 
correct spelling. That's predictive. There's one called predictive. You can turn those off or on. Settings, and what's the next step? Settings, general, keyboard. <coughs> Settings, general, keyboard. Um, keyboard. This mail hasn't been set up here. Keyboard. But if you go up to... Here. Our correction's on. Should I not turn it on? Well, you, and you've got predictive there, so... Oh, that take may, out the predictive. You could play around with it and see what setting will make that characteristic go away. You know, a thing that mine does do whenever I start typing, it, I'll get part way through it and it'll ask me if I want to go ahead and, what is it, just click uh, return and it, it'll finish printing out all that information from your contacts list. Mm -hmm. Take out that predictive and it should stop that. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> and, and I've got it all turned on, so I don't have a problem. Are you syncing your laptop with your iPad as far as... No, no, this is just sitting there. I'm no. doing this, just playing with no. this. Do you sync your contacts from your laptop and your iPad oh, together? Oh, I've got them okay. uh, go into your in laptop. iCloud. iCloud go yeah. into your laptop, open up an email, and, and create a new email. And go to your window, and you'll see this is grayed out because there isn't an account set up. But it says previous recipients. Yeah. Open that up on your laptop and see if there's some of those that fit that, that same fit thing. That that thing. Showing right. up. Yeah, there should be a whole list of previous recipients, and you can delete those things from previous recipients so they don't show up. Under window previous recipients. You have to create a new email. email first. Get an email started. Started. Okay. Then go up the window. Okay. And go to where it says previous recipients and see if those things are pop are in there. Okay. Because if you get sometimes you get junk mail addressed to you from you and it may not be exactly the same. Yeah. That may be what it's picking up. Okay. Check that out on your laptop, and if you delete all that stuff, it should sync I'll up. I'll try with that first, and if yeah. it doesn't work, I'll knock out predictive first. <laughs> What's nice in there is there'll be an icon if it's an actual address in your address book or contact list. There'll be an icon next to it. The ones that don't have an icon, you know, came from emails you received. <coughs> I didn't recognize what it changed my ES Hopper to. Yeah. It's so totally strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an easy way to know what to clean out. Yeah. Okay. That's help oh. you too. Click out, clean out the ones that do or do not have, don't have an icon. They don't have an icon. Because the, the icon, icon infers you got that in your address book. Right? Okay. Thanks. Sorry to bring you back to realism here. Yeah, I've got a question I'd like to ask. In the past couple of months. Okay, you need to keep it down because we can't hear. In the last couple of months, there have been at least two different instances where uh, my wife has received a mail, an email from Google saying, we recently blocked a sign-in attempt to your Google account. And uh, they give you the specifics as to when this, uh, if you will, happen. And it says, please review your account activity and to see if anything looks suspicious. Whoever tried to sign into your account knows your password. We recommend you change it right away. And the first time it happened, it happened um, three different days, and it was about uh, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and it actually gave me the IP address that it came from, and uh, we were able to click on something, and it showed the, the, a picture from Google Maps of the, the house that supposedly, or apartment building that it was in. Now, um, of course, anytime we get a, an email like this, it alarms us that someone's trying to get into our computer or our account, and, uh, the first thing we do is change the password and, and take whatever steps Google is describing that needs to be done. It's not Google. It's not Google. It's not Google. What you need to do is go up and click on the email itself. And I can't do it on that one, but over on the right where this is, you'll see this discover card. If you click on that, Look and see what it actually says as far as who it's from. Just hover, hover the pointer over. It could be joeblow.google.com, and that's some... He's, he's duplicating the... Right. The, he the, hasn't the, tried to get in. He knows your email address. He just wants you to click on those links and go do something so they can, you know, see what you're doing. And you're, you're gonna, they are so good at duplicating websites. <coughs> well, I'm in the ground of field myself, and I know how easy well, it is. You know how easy it is. 
do, do not answer. Just check the email, see if it is actually google.com. Uh, this one that I've got here says uh, it's from Google, no reply at accounts.google.com. The, from, yeah, accounts the, from, dot, that's not the from is irrelevant, those are easily forged. Yes. Okay. The, the important point is that links may claim to be going to Google to log in and modify your account. Never click those because, you know, go to Google manually because those links will go to their website yeah. and you change your password there and guess what you just gave the password. If you yeah. move your cursor over a link and just let it sit there, right. a window will pop up and show you the actual URL of where it's going. Okay. okay? And that way you can tell exactly what you're clicking on. Don't click, and just hover the pointer over it like you said. Yeah, just move the pointer over it. Don't click on it. Just move the pointer over it, and a little window will show you the actual URL. Is there any chance you can demonstrate that the on the link Don't click on it. Just turn the link that's coming from. I'm going to have to see if you can see it here. Just move it. Don't click on it. That'll pop up, and that'll show you your actual link. That, that can be that can be defeated as well. You can share that box out that way. So the actual link. Yes, that's the actual link. That's about a link that's going to discover.com. This is the rest of the page that you go to. But the fact that this has happened to follow this, then basically we've given them our new password. Right. Just do not do that at all. Go straight to Google and yeah. change it. Now go straight to Google and change it. Yeah. <laughs> I set up in a Google account and I, it's a web-based because I thought I could get it from anywhere. Oh, uh, long story short, I was a shame. What was that? Long story short, before my wife went and I went to Florida on vacation, we had booked something with Princess. We were put on a waiting list. I thought, and, and they said, once you percolate to the top of the waiting list, we will send you an email. And that's the only way they do it. They wouldn't do a phone or anything else. They send you an email. You have 48 hours to accept the offer because you moved to the top of the list. If you don't get back with us within 48 hours, you're pulled off of the top. The next person comes up and your booking is canceled. So I was in Florida at a Hilton location and I thought that I would be able to log on to Google mail and get this email to, just to see if we get moved up to the top on this princess list. I tried to log in and they came back to me and said, uh, you are logging on from a location that we, my words now, you're logging on from a location that we don't recognize. We're going to send you a one-time password to your to the phone number ending in such, they were going to send it to my home phone. Didn't do me a whole hell of a lot of good in Orlando, Florida. Okay? So I was unable to log in. We lost the booking, and that's another whole story. But I had that message on my, from Google, that somebody, that someone tried to log on to your account, and I, in fact, tried to do it from a public computer at Hilton Grand Vacations in Orlando, Florida. Okay? And it wouldn't let me do it. So yours is getting, somebody's pinging, sounds like somebody's pinging yours trying to get in. I was the one that tried to ping my Google Mail address and Google Mail recognized a different location and like I said, tried to set up this one-time password that you can get and type in and then you'll be able to log in from wherever you want to go, wherever you're at. So if you put in your cell phone number, then have to call yourself. Well, phone. I hate to say this, but uh, I have a cell phone and my cell phone is for emergency purposes. I don't live on that cell phone. For 25 years, I worked at a place called FTD. Can't take a cell phone into this organization. And people to, the, to this day say, you can't take it to work now. You couldn't think it would work. So I don't have a cell phone. I mean, I've got one, but it's for emergency only. I don't live on the damn thing. That's it. Now, good. Well, this is the point. This was an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> you need, you're going to need to give it a phone that's going to be with you when you're at a night. Oh, yeah. Because they are monitoring where you've gone. Yeah. In hindsight,
hindsight, you're exactly right. You don't have to go to Florida to do it. You just got to go to the new room in your house. <laughs> Ouch. Okay. So that is something that Gmail can do as a matter of course? Yes. They yes doing it all the time. Yeah, they do that. Okay. Yeah. Well, wasn't the right. security right. was going on from a public computer rather than his own? Right, which is why it's a security measure yeah. that Google implements. I mean, if you had a laptop, your own laptop, would that have worked for it? No, because it's still a different location. Okay. So it, it, I'm assuming it would still be a different yeah. IP address, and so therefore it would say, oops, something's wrong, I need to do this yeah. security people. We had a, cut, a, a member here have something happen to her similar to this. She got an email saying that her email account had been hacked. Contact Apple at this number. She called that number. They referred her to another number who then charged her 170 some dollars to fix it. And it was all bogus. Okay? So any of these things, disregard it. Go directly to Apple through your browser. Do not click on anything on an email. I make an important distinction here. Yeah. What he's talking about is legit. That's right. really Google, yes. you know, wanting security because he's coming in from a different location. This other stuff, you know, these, these unsolicited yeah. emails that pop right. up, those are not genuine. His experience was genuine. Right. Okay. So just be careful. Mm -hmm. Err on the side of caution. Yeah. Uh, you know, and she wound up, you know, losing a hundred and some bucks because somebody told her her email was hacked. Just to, just to explain, I, you know, I've got Safari on my iPhone, and I don't, I don't think I have a Google account, although I use a lot of surfing with Google. Okay. Is what we've been talking about relevant to that situation? This was an email that she got saying that her account had been hacked, yeah, okay. and called this number through. Mm -hmm. Whatever her email account, I assume it was probably Gmail. But uh, then she called this number, of course, oh yes, you know, they were very polite, moved her on to somebody else, charged her credit card a hundred and some bucks, and, and they surprisingly let their email go, but it was, it was all there anyway. So, George, you can use Google Search and Google email yeah. or Google, you know, online without having a Google account. Yeah, you don't. She have had a, a Google account. We're talking about Google. You can have Google, you know, Gmail is Google's email. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, you can surf, or there's other browsers you can use uh, to use the surf or to search for. You know, pretty much anything that comes over the transom in your email, you know, purporting to be from Google, Microsoft, Apple, and saying, hey, you know, uh, you know, you're you're compromised. You got to you got to log in and change this or. You know, every bad things are going to happen. You can pretty much assume that all of that stuff is bogus. PayPal and Amazon are two of the worst. Yeah, I or your have insurance. Have a PayPal account, so I know. Yeah, it's not so you know it's you, you know it's right. bogus. Or your insurance company. <coughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much anything like that. That's that, that. Those are those are fishing expeditions by by crooks, and what they want, as has already been explained, is for you to click on those links and say, oh yes, now I'm changing my whatever password. No, you're not. You're giving them the password that, so that they can, they can then try it. And then the danger for a lot of people, of course, is that because we human beings have a hard time remembering 50, 60, 100 passwords, people tend to use the same password for multiple accounts. So then once they say, well, you know, uh, you use this for your Gmail password, wonder if it works on this fifth, third account. You know? So, yeah, no. Uh, those email, those email things that just pop into your inbox, you just terminate with extreme prejudice. You don't. You don't. Well, there's also the measure of are you expecting it? He was expecting something from Princess, so there's, well, right. there's an air of legit, you know. But but the, but but when he tried to sign in, yeah. the the problem that he had yeah, was obvious. legitimate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This yeah. other stuff is not. Well, a question related to that is you get these emails, a lot of them come in junk emails. And you're getting sick and tired, you get them from every company and organization, and you want to unsubscribe, you go to the bottom of the thing, it says click on this to unsubscribe, you do, it takes you to another page, 
because it sends you to a web page and you're supposed to fill in your email address and they'll unsubscribe you. Is there anything you just fishy told that going guy, on with that? You just, you just told, told that spammer that, that you're a live email, email account. Yeah. Well, yeah, but what if it was a real organization? That if it's somebody it, that you, like you get tired subscribe of Amazon, to, then you can unsubscribe. But if it's just... Right. Yeah, but if it's... If, some legitimate company. Like, I mean. Okay. Back a number of years ago, I subscribed to a bunch of, of uh, you know, email newsletters for organizations. Uh, at the time I was interested in. Uh, I'm no longer interested, but I know that I th those are real, okay? Those are real organizations that I asked for this stuff. Uh, and, you know, I click on the unsubscribe, I do their, th they don't need to ask me for my email address, they already know it, okay? Because I gave it to them, okay? Uh, so they, they don't ask me for my email address, and you know, when, Anything like that that you click on and it asks you for your email address or anything else, bogus. Okay. Even uh, if it's unsubscribed from a legitimate company, if, if it's like if Amazon it's, or something. If, what, if, it, if this is something that you subscribe to, you know that you subscribed to this this newsletter, then that's one thing. But if it's if it's just something that's out of the blue, there's a real good chance that it's. Uh, well, if you've ever purchased from any of these companies, yeah. they'll continue to send these things to you. Sure. Mm -hmm. You purchase from Amazon, they. But I'm tired of the Amazon things. They just come in put twice it, a day. Put, put Log on to your Amazon it, account. Turn, you know, just call it junk mail. Yeah. And then it eventually will start going right into your junk mail folder. Now, a lot of times, emails, when they're sent to you, they'll get an automatic return saying that you've opened this up. Right. And I've gotten the habit now of when I get a bunch of junk mail, I signed up for Medicare in October. And my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I mean, now it 65. Was 200 of these things a day. Yeah. So it, it's starting to slow down now because I've been junking it. But when you, I'm using mail program for my mail. So when I select an email, some of these things will send a, an email back to them saying I've opened it. What I do is I select one email that I've already opened, I know that's valid. And then I will hold my Apple key down or the command key down and select additional ones, okay? That way they're not opening, you're just selecting them. Then you click on, you hold your Apple key down and click on the good one again. That will unhighlight it. Then you go through and go through all your junk, select them all, so they're all, in my case, they'd be lined in blue. Then I hit my junk button and it sends them all in the junk folder without opening them. Then I select them all again and hit my trash button, it puts them in the trash folder and then I can trash them, delete the trash. Well, how will that stop them from continuing to do well, it? Well, it will continue, it'll automatically teach the computer that that's a oh, piece of junk and it'll put I it in the junk folder. Then you can set your junk folder up to say, automatically delete when a junk mail comes in. And it doesn't if tell you, the company it that you opened it. It doesn't tell you a valid it email address. So they'll continually stream it to you, but it's continuously <coughs> being deleted through your the, junk yeah, mail. The, the junk folder in my email is just a wonderland of crap yeah. uh, that, that I never see, okay? I, I, because I've, I've, I've taught the, the software over, over time. I don't want this stuff. I seldom see junk mail in my inbox. Almost all of it goes to junk. On any typical day, there's well over a thousand uh, emails in there. It's amazing. Uh, and and uh, I, I look in there every now and then just to be sure the things that I want you know, are not, you know, being picked off. Uh, but it, it, yeah, it, with, with time and with a little diligence about teaching the software what's good and what's bad, it will work. Yeah. I've used where you block, where you go and block certain, um, like with um, Amazon.com. You can block everything that's coming in with Amazon.com mm -hmm. or with Earthlink.com mm -hmm. or with whatever like that. You need to and be, I you, use the block folder a lot. You need to be a little bit careful about blocking entire, uh, entire, entire domains. Uh, you know, if you block, uh, you know, like say, if you block everything from AOL.com, mm -hmm. just pick one. Uh, you know, that that I mean, you block the whole domain, you block everything. 
Uh, Anybody so with an email address. Anyone, you know, you know, eHopper at AOL.com, you're never going to see it. Right. Well, I did that by she probably said it's good. I everything personally. I couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting Mark's um, emails anymore. Yeah. So you got, you're going to be a little bit careful about blocking entire email domains. Right. Getting back to the email receipts. Um, I don't know about Apple Mail because I don't use it, but in the Mozilla Mail packages, you can tell it to ask before you know responding to a receipt, so that you don't okay. you don't uh, um, give yourself away. You yeah. Know, someone has a, a receipt request. Yeah. I don't know if Apple Mail has that. I I, get, I don't use email. Apple Mail, so I I can't answer that question. Oh. Um, uh, what, do you use? what do you use? Uh, I, uh, I I bailed on email clients some time ago. I do all my email uh, through the through the web client. Uh, the uh, it was for for me. Different people have different needs. For me, that was easier uh, because uh, I frequently need to access email from machines that are not my own. Uh, so it, it was begin it was beginning to be a problem. Because uh, I did for years use clients. I, I used the I used Thunderbird for uh, for years, uh, but uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, it was going to be a problem because uh, I I would have stuff uh, in the client and it wouldn't be you know it wouldn't be conveniently accessible from from wherever I happen to be on equipment not my own, uh, and the management was getting it was just a pain in the ass. Uh, so I said, "The heck with it," and uh, I just keep everything. I just keep everything online. Um, uh, if you people don't use was, anything. What do you use? I don't understand what you're saying. What's your app for email? Webmail. What, webmail. Oh, I, you just use a URL. I just use. I just use. The, I just use uh, usually Web Firefox uh, or whatever browser happens to be available on whatever machine I happen to be using, uh, and then I can I can get at it. Now there are risks involved in that. Uh, because obviously all of my email is housed on somebody else's equipment, you know. It, it, but I figure it's unlike my main my main email account is a Yahoo account, and hopefully Yahoo is not going to go belly up, you know, in the next little bit. And if it is going to go belly up, I'll get some warning uh, so that I could suck I could suck things down onto my own hardware uh, if it looked like Yahoo was going to, you know, bail out. Uh, but uh, that, you know that works for me. Other people with multiple email accounts. I was just discussing this with uh, an individual recently, and his wife had like five email accounts for different uh, 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 different organizations she's involved in. And the only way that she can work it is on a client with all the email coming into the client, and that's fine. Uh, you know that those are her needs. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and she apparently does not need to access her email from other people's equipment uh, on a regular basis. So that works for her. Uh, for me, I just use the browser, the online, uh, the online email account, and let it go with that. And like I said, for, for years, I, you know, I was an email client guy, uh, but, uh, but not anymore. What's a client? That, a, an application for reading uh, like for reading mail. email like Apple Mail. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's a program. Of the, the, the software, not the not the cheap one. There's an extension for Safari called AdBlock, and how you get to it is you open up Safari, you go to Safari extensions. If you don't have this on your computer already, scroll down and you'll see AdBlock down here. This thing is amazing. Is how it blocks pop up things when you're out surfing. It's amazing what it does. But you just go to Safari Extensions, open it up, it'll take you to this web page, install AdBlock, and it completely gets rid of all the pop-up windows when you're hitting, you know, you're surfing around. It's real easy to do. You just click on that, and then select Install. Now, this is coming off the Apple website, so this is a, a legitimate program. And what will happen is, is when you install it, up here, you'll see a little hand like this, like their little eye, and it'll be right next to your, your URL window. And that, it's just really a phenomenal little extension for Safari if you're tired of all the crap that pops up. 
virtually the same. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
They sell them to other people who then try to do things exactly such as you described. Okay, uh, actually the likelihood, considering the numbers of accounts that have been pilfered from various sites, uh, the chances are, are high that that's where that information came from. Uh, it was either stolen by the person who spammed you with that, or it was sold to the spammer by the, by the person who stole it. The, the likelihood that uh, it, you know, it's an internal job, well it's possible, but it's unlikely, uh, considering the millions and millions of accounts that have been pilfered uh, from uh, uh, various organizations by these online thieves. So there's a lot of that information out there floating around. I had to replace a credit card, uh, or rather the company replaced it for me, uh, because it was one of the accounts that was compromised in one of these recent thefts. Uh, so, you know, this is unfortunately a fact of life for all of us. Uh, and, you know, you've got, to be, you've got to be very alert and very suspicious of anything of that type that, that, uh, that pops up in your, in your inbox. Uh, because it's, uh, it's a, a multi-million dollar criminal industry here in 2015. And these criminals might not even be in the United States. Oh yeah, they could be, they could be Russians, they could be, they could be somewhere in Asia. Uh, mostly they're beyond the reach of U.S. law enforcement. Okay, uh, so there, there really is very little uh, that you can do about these people. Uh, and, you know, Russia has made it very clear, uh, you know, for a long time that they don't give a crap. Okay, uh, it, it really doesn't matter to them uh, that Russian gangsters are looting uh, American bank accounts. They don't care. So, so change your card. Is that the bottom line? Well, no, the, the, in my case, the, 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 uh, the bank card company, uh, you know, uh, shut down the, the old one and gave me a new card. I still have an account with them, but it's, it's all, the, the, the account number is different, uh, you know, all that has changed. Uh, and when I go to the company website, uh, it shows me my active account, and then there's also the old shutdown account. All that, the, the, uh, the records there for all my purchases and whatnot are still available to me online, but that account is dead. Uh, you know, they can, try, uh, they can try to, you know, use that account, but it's not going to work. Okay. What happened with the old game card that we had, and again, they immediately shut that down, changed the account, um, um, you know, everything was closed down, and it was the investigation, they did tell me, was from over somewhere in Europe. But yeah. That was it. But with the other one, we just canceled the card. It's, it's, yeah. it's probably a good idea for all of us. Uh, you know, n no one likes this. I don't like it. But it's probably not a bad idea to change uh, the passwords on your financial accounts on a fairly regular basis. Uh, Considering the way these accounts get pilfered and all the other ways that your accounts can be compromised, uh, to stick with the same password uh, on your, uh, you know, on your financial accounts year after year is probably not a good idea. Uh, you know. Has uh, anybody here been affected by the Anthem hack? Oh, you have me. No, okay. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not, not okay. We're yeah. aware of that. <laughs> okay. Have you been a past member of Anthem? Anyway, uh, I'm past member. I went, we got an email regarding it, uh, went there, and they do provide credit reporting, monitoring for you for, I think, one or two years. Two years. Two years, and then you can actually go into that monitoring account and <coughs> increase that to, you know, to their next level of security for yeah. free also. So I, I've been... I actually, I actually have three different credit protection things going because of accounts that were compromised yeah. at different times. I'm using LifeLock so, and now I'm using the one Anthem yeah. providing. Well, and you can, if you don't use new credit a lot, you can go to the credit bureaus and actually lock your account. You can freeze your credit. Completely yes. freeze it yeah. and if, if you're not going and buying a whole bunch of stuff next few years, that's a good idea to do, you know. Um, Another good idea that I've done where I was going to make a major purchase on my credit card I called them up and told them what I was doing, so it went through immediately. Uh, I learned that lesson when I bought a, a washer and dryer from Sears, and the next day tried to buy a car wash, and I, it wouldn't approve me. Some so, credit card companies will issue you a specific credit card number 
for a one-time use at a specific retailer, especially if it's a large purchase, okay? It's not the same as your regular credit card, but it's tied to your credit card, and you can use that once and one time only. So that's another, you know, tool you can use. Another thing, if you're, if you're planning any kind of overseas travel outside the United <laughs> States, let your credit, whatever credit card or cards you're planning to use overseas, let them know before you go. Uh, because otherwise you're liable to run into difficulties when you try to use that card in, in France or Bermuda or wherever. Uh, and they, because, you know, they're, they're uh, thinking, well, you know, this person has been using this credit card in the United States for 22 years and all of a sudden we got a credit card charge from, you know, wherever, they're going to think it's, they're going to think it's at least potentially fraud. Uh, so, uh, you know, before you head overseas, uh, let your, let your financial people know, hey, I'm going to be making, making charges uh, in whatever country. Yeah, that's been going on for quite a long time. Yeah. A buddy yeah. of mine, uh, you know, probably 20 years ago, went to Australia, found out that they, they, you know, his credit card was blocked in Australia. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Anyway, somebody. I, I took advantage of when I changed ISP providers earlier last year to um, change how I deal with email. I said, well, I'll pass this on. If you were to come to me today and ask me my email, I'd probably give you my regular email account number or account address. But whenever I'm shopping, whenever I'm doing anything on the web, I use a Gmail account specifically for that. And then anything, any spam related stuff. This, that those people who sell my address to, I can simply just ignore. And, and on Gmail, I can specifically go in and have it forward a specific account or a specific address to my regular account. So I kind of use Gmail as a, like a filter. Yeah. And then nobody else, except for people I specifically want to know my true email address, have that address. So Does everybody understand what he's talking about? Uh, that he's got the, he's got his real email address that you go to like friends and family, and then you get kind of a business one uh, that you can give to people who say they need your email address, but you don't necessarily want to give them, you know, the the real deal. Uh, but then you, you then you can forward from that to your real one, and you still haven't revealed your real personal email. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. This okay. Was after and I use that for any purchases or any type of uh, account, any type of any cert, a seminar I register for, anything that I do that is not a personal contact mm -hmm. on my contact list mm -hmm. has my Gmail account, on, and that's it. I actually use a, I use a similar approach, but I have a third account uh, that uh, is actually the one for that I, when you have a store or whatever that insist that they have to have your email account and they just cannot do this thing that you want unless they have an email account. Yeah. I have the third account that's my spam account. Yeah. And I, I give them I give them that. It's a real account. So the email won't bounce. Okay? But I haven't looked at it for years. Uh, <laughs> and I won't. Okay? Because the only people I give it's that up a the only people I give that account to are people I never want to hear from, okay? So that's, you know, that's that's a good approach too. But the thing is yeah. on Gmail, on Gmail you can actually go in and say every email that comes in from a specific address or domain, yeah. forward that to another address. Right. So that's the key part. How do you do that with Gmail? Uh, well, you gotta go under the gear. Yeah, it's under the And then there's a several tabs. You gotta search around because they give you a bunch of them. Well, also, Gmail allows plus addresses, so you can say, you know, my email address plus Sears at gmail.com, mm. and that I creates, didn't know that. that okay. creates, it will go to your address, but you will see that that came from the Sears address, Yeah. and so you can actually say plus right or right. Low, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, going back to that time yeah, machine yeah, there. Yeah. It's because we're looking at that picture. That, that, yeah, that's <laughs> a picture somewhere <laughs> soon to be, maybe. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. No. The credit card company did not like the credit card company.
Yeah. Yeah. So if you're on the monthly side, you know, plan plus eight. So your credit card wouldn't go through with the green? Yes. It, well, that, it got crazy. We were buying an iPad. It wouldn't take that charge. But they ran the accessories up separately. And since that was a smaller dollar amount, that they accepted. So I went home and called to find out why. Not the story of, well, this number's been one of those that's been picked up through like a target or whatever. Right. But I said, okay, so tell me what stores I need to avoid using this. Just ask them to send a new credit card. And well, yeah. what they told me was they couldn't tell me that only the credit card company could. I'm talking to you, the credit card company. <laughs> and I, well, the only thing we can do is issue you an account. Well, if, if I've been on a list that's a potential email of fraud, why didn't you contact me? Well, we can't do that. That would be just, too many people to contact. <laughs> I can't do that. They wait until something happens and then yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I said, well, that's fine, except I'm going out of town tomorrow and I'm going to be gone for, you know, three or four days. How do I know you're not going to cancel or, you know, not approve any charges I make on this part? Well, we can put it in that you're going to be out of town. I don't think they should, they should accept those. But we can't guarantee that that's going to happen. Well, so when I got not, back, I had to Right. Thank, thank goodness not all credit card companies are quite that laissez-faire. Uh, who are we talking about? Yeah, who are we talking about? PNC. PNC? Okay. They've been having some problems like in a lot of stuff. So they get, and what's ironic is I'm also on my brother-in-law's Visa card with PNC. And I just put like $3,000 on that one and signed it and went through completely because this hadn't been used at one of those, I don't know if it was a people or Target or who, you know. But then somebody told me that Apple had had problems too, and that maybe because it was an Apple charge. Two years ago, I had a uh, credit card call me, said that my card had been used in Georgia and asked me if I was in Georgia. No, I hadn't been in Georgia. And uh, so a year later, we got ready to go on a trip to California. So I went to call the card company and say, well, I'm going to be in California, so I want you to accept charges in California. And they said, fine. And I said, now you're limited to California. Oh, no, any place. <laughs> they wouldn't isolate my charges to just California where I was going. But any place in the United States then would accept my card. So I felt it was kind of a worthless call. You know, I opened it up for more problems than I thought I was going to get. I, when we went on vacation, I called. I had to name every state that we were going to be in because they would only accept in those states. That sounds reasonable. So I had yeah. to name. So I'm going through my mind all the states we hit from Colorado because we were taking one trip way up and one way back. So I had to every possible state. That would be a reasonable yeah, request from the company. But yeah, I, I had that same thing. They, they asked, if you want. since I'm driving, they said, what's your driver's license? And you tell them what state you intend to be traveling through. So yeah, I've had that happen with mine. When you think about it from their point of view, it's a nightmare. Identity has got to be a nightmare. Mm -hmm. How do you prove you're you? It amazes me. The stuff you can do over the phone, and okay, yeah, we need we need to authorize it. Are you well, rich? Why, you I mean, that's exactly yeah. why the crooks want the credit card numbers. Yeah. You know, well, any bit of identity. They, they they've gone them. to stopping some of that by saying, "Tell me that security code number on the back of your card." Right. So you have they have to have possession of your card. Right. To read that three-digit number off the back of your card. Right. Well, Except. To what degree has anybody? Talking about this. To what degree has anybody gone in and gotten a new credit card with the chip? The RFID chip? They just sent them. USAA just sent them out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those can be read by scanners. Yes. With my MasterCard. You can buy either little, you remember the little Tyvek envelopes you used to put your credit cards in to protect the strip in the back? Right. They make those things that are. 
that will block it like a well, Faraday cage. Can I, can I make a comment? My wife and I got the new passports, and the new passports oh, are okay. chip and Yes, they are. And we picked up at AAA uh, sleeves that you can put them in. Another good way of doing those, it is just take it on a hard sleeves, surface with a hammer, those, find that chip, and smash it. Those sleeves <laughs> will, if you go through the metal detector and you move fast enough, will cause it to alarm. Yeah. <laughs> so well, it's not a problem for me. To me, whenever you move fast enough, whenever you're walking through that hysteresis loop, just take it no. nice and slow. Yeah. No. I, I'm getting off metal in my body. It doesn't matter what I do. <laughs> walk fast, walk slow. Makes no difference. And then they have to do it manually because it's not reading. I had a Gmail question. We have a Gmail account for our RASC group. Uh, but anyway, the point is I go out to send a message out, and it's webmail. Back in it's webmail. Pardon? Gmail. Yeah, Gmail. But I can only write, they, they, when you say make a new message, just a little square in the lower left-hand corner. And I, I can write in it, but I, I like to be able to have a big one come up and so I can see the whole message that I'm writing. And I wonder, is there any way to move that corner up and make it bigger? I mean, like on Apple Mail, you hit new mail and you've got a big, big On the little field where you enter whatever text. Yeah. Many times down in the lower uh, right hand corner, you just grab it and drag it. Okay, this is, this is using it. a web browser? This is a web browser. What, what browser? G well, Gmail. No, Gmail, Gmail is the uh, service. Safari, What's I know, I'm sorry. Safari. Chrome or Safari? Chrome or Safari. We, we use both. Okay. Is, is this on a laptop or a. Uh, no, it's on a desktop. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to use both. Okay, so it's an actual computer, not it's an iOS. A, it's a computer, yeah. Okay. You know the little red, green, and yellow buttons up in the top left? No, but I can look and find in the win Every window has a yeah. red, oh, yeah, green, and yellow. Oh, yeah, a little round thing. Okay, yeah, click on the green yeah. button once. Right. See how that... Yeah, no, I know what those are, yeah. Yeah, well, click on the green button, and that might enlarge the window itself. Well, yeah. I can it's enlarge the window. I've got a 27-inch monitor. It's filling. It's just that I would like to be able to see my whole message. So I can't. Oh, okay, okay. I can't move that corner. That's what the problem. Is. Sure, that. She's showing it to me. There's a little diagonal double arrow. When you're creating a message, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make it this arrow here. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you. That's all. Is that it? That's it. Okay. I'd like to thank all of you guys that took over the building in and got uh, oh, sure. this just like that by the last minute, but you did a good job, so thank you. Yes.